Got you. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, children of the corn, welcome back to the Mindless War Podcast. Prevents. Uh, prevents. Preventing <laughs> wildfires? Yeah. Start Only you strong, can prevent you. wildfires. <laughs> um, I do apologize. English is my first language and I'm still learning. <laughs> and I struggle with it uh, every day. But yes, the Mindless War Podcast presents Scare Actor Appreciation Month. We got two more. We got two more. Two more, man. Two more, man. I, I, I don't know, I just keep growing. Thank you to everyone that's been watching, but today we got a special episode. We have special, special episode. <laughs> <laughs> the pun was not even intended on Not even intended, man. It just comes from special, the heart. Special heart. It feels yeah. like my heart is infected. Infected. <laughs> that one was intended. That one was intended. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you could tell. The first one, no. Second one, yeah. So we got Ashley and Delaney. Why don't, why don't you ladies introduce yourself? One. Well, and you're kidding. Yep. Um, this year I was a squad leader in Infected, so that's fun. Probably saw you many times, not even knowing. Probably. Yeah, a lot way. of people do. We, uh, we went through that. That'd be like our first maze we hit every night. Yeah. So. Yes. Well, if you hit it in the beginning of the night, you probably saw me like intense, like, yeah, let's go. Everybody. <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you caught me at one Hit it like the middle of the night. That's I was <laughs> stumbling through. Okay, there's many <laughs> <Yeah>. stories. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Delaney. I was a zombie. And nice. it's my first year. Yeah. First year. So you're the, the rookie then. Yes. Nice. The, the rookie. Scary the rookie. rookie. And that's just the... So you've done past stuff then. Yeah, I started last year, 2018, at Castle Park. Okay. Yep. All right. Awesome. Is that the one in Riverside? Mm hmm. Nice. Do they call it like Castle Dark? Yeah, they okay. call it Castle Dark for a while. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, Infected Special Ops, the final year, the final season was this season. It was a sad, sad, uh, <laughs> very maze sad. That was leaving because it was, it, was it was a really fun maze, to be honest, because it was one of the first mazes where. You weren't the victim anymore. Yeah, you were, it yeah. actually, like, I don't know any other haunts that give you a gun and let you freaking run about a maze and shoot zombies. Zombies. Yeah. I mean, if you're smart with that, unless yeah. you're being stupid with it, but, I mean, that was always, when when I went, you know, I mean, my, I went full, <laughs> we know. <laughs> I went full John Wick when I went, so the gun was always sideways, and, you know, Oh, my gosh. Well, as long as it was cut close into you oh, yeah like oh, not yeah. usually a problem like we look at you and you're like what are you doing but I, was, I, was really <laughs> waiting yeah. for, I was really waiting for the barrel roll across <laughs> oh dives. i've seen some things dude <laughs> i'm, so, I'm seen, sure there's a lot of people who probably play video games and and watch the movies going into this maze where it's like yeah they just think it's real all of a sudden a real thing and they can just do it all yeah oh not the zombies crazy. comes to life yep yeah. exactly um Tell us a little bit about your guys' experience in the maze. And uh, so you were a squad leader and you were a zombie. And so there's got to be two different experiences from each one. And then you guys probably every now and then hopefully had some similar ones. Do you want to go first? I don't know. Do you want to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll go first. Um, it was a big jump compared to something as small as Castle Dark. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a wild ride. Um, it was mostly just kind of like observing what the vet zombies were doing and kind of bouncing off of them and I would I brought back I was a demon the year before and I had like just like this yell that I could do that worked for kind of the same thing so nice. I was like okay that's a sound I could do <laughs> and um I play Left 4 Dead so nice. I would play that. I played that like the day before scare school. I was like I have to do a run right now. <laughs> I got to get inspo for this and yeah. I mean, you guys Were you in a specific room or? I was on the street with the helicopter. Street with Bravo. the helicopter. Bravo yes. streets. Bravo. Bravo. Yes. The same, the same helicopter where Brian Vincent yes. broke off. The same helicopter. I was there for that. It was. Yeah. We'll get so into that. Funny. We will get. To you should definitely I have post to that picture <laughs> in this video. <laughs> yes. Just a little like thought yes. bubble. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Because <laughs> I know there's different. He. I was hearing that there was different perspectives from everybody on that. So that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, what about you? What did you, how was your experience? Well, okay, so this is my third year doing Haunt, and each of the three years I've been an infected, okay. but my first two years I was a zombie, nice. so going from zombie to squad leader this year was super different, and it's kind of cool, because it's like, you see what the zombies do, mm -hmm. in my case you do what the zombies do, and then you switch completely, and I was like, whoa. You see what they <laughs> um, do, and then you fight them. Yeah. <laughs> did you have like a specialty weapon? No, because I didn't have any of my own stuff. I just used all of Vincent's from the year before. Yeah. So, like, I had his vest, I had his guns. 
Um, I had my brother's little like BB gun and like a <laughs> knife, but I didn't really use the knife because it didn't stay where I wanted it to. Like I had a little belt loop thing, but it would fall out constantly. So I'd be running guests through and it just plop on the floor. I was like, well, <laughs> hope no one saw that. Hope no one tries to swipe it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, my um, knife. <laughs> yeah. Souvenir. Yeah. Souvenir, right? Man? Definitely not. Definitely not. That's disrespectful. Really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, um, we we've gone through the maze so many times. Try just about everything we can to just do different styles of things, and we've seen people do some interesting things in that maze. What are some of the funniest things you've seen guests do in that maze? So I know probably <laughs> the sound we just made. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I so I was in sewers. Okay. I was towards the end, and there's a ramp you had to go up, and the ramp my enemy only because no one understood that there was a ramp there's a giant ramp any ramp is anyone's enemy but no one saw the ramp they were like i'm gonna go this way and <laughs> we'd always try to go through the zombies that were standing there or like whoever was standing there mm -hmm. um but the funniest thing about it so the ramp is here and there's like a pole here to like hold it up and hold all the structure blah 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 mm -hmm. And people would be so into what they were doing, they wouldn't pay attention. And when they turned to go up the ramp, they'd smack oh, straight into great. the pole. And then <laughs> they turn and look like, like, where'd like, that come from? No, they turn oh, and look man. and get mad at the zombies. Like, what the heck? Why did you push me into this like thing? And I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like up here. Let's go. Like, <laughs> it's not that hard. Oh. Um, there's a couple more, but they're. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. It's always people running into stuff. Yeah. At least for me, it's also people running into stuff. So yeah. we also have the ramp going up into the metro. Mm -hmm. And there's this motorcycle that would sit in front of the red car. And for the if there's not a traffic cone, like we had like these big orange traffic cones. And if mm -hmm. that thing wasn't there, people would trip on it constantly. <laughs> people were either tripping on the motorcycle or they were tripping over the platform that the helicopter was on. Yeah. But the so, fun thing is both of those items were not in your path. You had They're to not. be clearly going the wrong way to Definitely. hit those things, yeah. especially the motorcycle, because the ramp was like here and the motorcycle was right here. Like here. So people would just go, they, they would like, they would just turn the corner, that corner really and wide and then they'd hit the wheel. And there was, there was this one guy, oh my gosh, he was like a slow motion. He was like this with the gun <laughs> pointed up and just like went, planked onto the floor and then he stayed there for like two seconds and all of us me and all the other zombies are just looking at him like is he okay <laughs> we're like waiting for the squad leader to come down and be like are you okay get up like he literally just stayed there and then finally the squad leader came down we're just standing there trying not to break character Oh, man. I know in my experience, every time I was coming around that corner to go up the ramp, I would always be focused to the right because there was always like a zombie over yeah. there. I would always be trying to shoot him, trying to get that headshot. And I'm like, oh, almost missed the ramp again. <laughs> yeah, people would do that too. They would go on the other side of the ramp, either where the zombies were. We had one guy completely walk through the curtain and go backstage. Nice. <laughs> and then, That's hilarious. <laughs> and then he in. came back in like, did I go the wrong way? They always We're come like, back in laughing. They're like, oh, haha, I went the wrong way. And I'm like, yeah, you went the wrong way. Get, Get go. You finish it. They would the go maze. that way or they would go to the other side of the car. He goes out the maze and sees ghost town monsters. Like, damn, this took a turn real quick. Like, they're, ghost they're town monsters like, sitting on, their sipping on coffee and, like, and stuff. <laughs> like, Sarah Marshall's <laughs> sitting there with cheese. That was something I see out break all the time. One of the which is in Origins, I think it was whoever was on the, uh, on, the yeah. on the 360 thing, yeah. the stunt scare, she would be on break like around the same time as me and I would always just see Sarah Marshall sitting by Crew's Nest with a coffee and it was the greatest thing. I she looked forward like, to it every <laughs> night. Yeah. <laughs> this is one thing I'm always curious about, did you guys ever run the maze? What like, do you mean? Like, like go through the maze like yourself and like try oh, yeah, to get a high yeah. score? And what was it? What was your high score? Six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine was not good. I think, I think I six was the highest score I've ever gotten. I went as a guest starting in, I think 2015 was the first year I went as a guest. And then I went every year since. And I think six is like the highest score I got. I think, I didn't really look at score wise, but like kills, I think the highest amount of kills I got was seven, six or seven no, kills. That's what I meant. kills. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> Can you have a score but, and kills? I think. I think it's like a That's score. That's a thing. Like a score, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. even you know like this when I worked stuff it. stuff that can upgrade your that weapons. That gives you, like, yeah. yeah oh, okay. Um, yeah. Fun story, though. While I was in the maze once, there was this, these people that were walking through, and this one girl was so scared, and she was just kind of like, 
dragging her gun on the ground like didn't really want it and i was like do you want me to take this and she's like yes so i took it and i was like do you want me to escort you out and she said no and she just booked it i was like okay bye <laughs> but i had her gun still so i was like all right so i was sitting there for a good 10 she's minutes shooting. just shooting zombies and the things and whatever and so finally i was like going on my break i was like all right i'm gonna go give him the gun back blah 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 and i gave it to one of my blackouts and they were like whoa how'd you get this high score like no one's ever like this is the i had like a hundred <laughs> you broke the world okay record. i had like 132 <laughs> kills on it <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, okay. There's not even that many zombies. Yeah. I'm like, how did you get this many They were kills? so confused, and I was like, do you not see what I'm wearing? Like, I just literally the just sat there. <laughs> yeah, I sat standing there standing at this ramp that nobody knows how to go up. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it was funny. I was kind of just like, I just <laughs> put me down as the <laughs> greatest stuffer. <laughs> 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 the poor black yeah. There's going to be a whole new score system if you can get to 132. Yeah. It's like the rank name is Ashley. Yeah. That's hilarious. Did you were you ever at the part where they had to like duck under? Oh, and how many heads did you see in that you hit? Because I know I got a concussion but it's it. I hit one of them hard. I almost lost my hat. You know? That was a really steep duck. <laughs> we were going favorite, through it. Oh man. My favorite thing is so we put our hands right above where the top was, mm. like yelling at people to go through. I'd be like, uh, get down, get low, blah blah blah. And I'd get so tired of saying I'd just be like Let's go, get low, like blah, blah, blah. Just really boring, really monotone, whatever. But people would not pay attention and they'd still hit their heads and then watching them hit it and go, ow, <laughs> and then walking through. And it was like, it doesn't get old. It really doesn't. They need to like put a sign on there that says, watch your head. They're, they'll, they still, they'll still hit they it. Still hit they'll it. still yeah, hit it, yeah, they would. Yeah, I thought it was like, no I matter thought what I you do, enough, people, and there's then somebody's still gonna like, hit it. Yeah. There's only, there were two times I was really concerned about people is one time I don't know how it happened but a guy went through managed to hit his head but also get his backpack stuck on like the webbing so when he went to go down he got pulled back oh, and he hit the back no. of his head again oh. but it wasn't hard the second time yeah. I was kind of just but like still, that's concerning so me and another squad leader were like trying to like get it off and we were I told him I was like just take your backpack off and we'll bring it to you and he was like but my stuff I was like go just get up because he was holding There's everyone else up yeah. so I was like just get out of here Go, it was really go. funny. And then another time, a lady hit her head so hard she like fell to the ground. And I was like, <sighs> oh. So like we had to take get, get yeah. Some like sometimes like, fell back like yeah fell yeah. Back. Well, she landed on her butt, so like People that was okay. But it was like sometimes. I was like, ooh. And we was, did like, have some really hard falls on Bravo too. There was yeah. sometimes one of them was out of a wheelchair. And like I, I felt that really bad. You guys got talked about it. Yeah, Ugh. just how like that ramp was killer. We were. They told us to steer them away from like one side. Yeah, the it, right like, side of it yeah. was where the wheels were getting caught. So if there was a, a guest with a wheelchair and they were to the right of that ramp going up into the metro, it would keep getting caught on the ramp. And there was one girl that just completely fell out of the wheelchair, <laughs> smacked all, down onto the ramp, and all of us were just like... Oh, Wait, so was there another yeah. route you could have taken to not go underneath? No. So how did the wheelchairs get through? Oh, and they're sitting. In the they're meat, fine. Yeah, they in the meat perfect, locker, too. there was two. Oh, rounds. oh, is that the one you're talking about? In the, the meat locker? locker? Oh no, no. I was just wondering, like, to, to, for the duck. Oh, the sewers. The sewer duck. Yeah, that the, one the you the just go locker. through. Um, yeah. because I mean, you're already in a wheelchair. You're already pretty low. Yeah. If yeah, you're really tall in a wheelchair, enough. then you just can. Yeah. Yeah. The sewers but, isn't as low as the meat locker. One. No, the, the meat locker there is the two options. Yeah. Yeah, they threw us in that one one time. <laughs> and then every other time they threw me around the other side. They're like, they saw us both. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, you guys aren't going in. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless the guy really wanted to watch us go through it. And it Sometimes like, it's fun to watch like really tall people just kind of yeah, get, like, have to get like, to the lowest height yeah. that they're allowed to do before breaking. Code. I will go through it. I'd be like, I don't fit through this. <laughs> <laughs> it is impossible for me to freaking do this. Slice. And I've done some. Squad like, like, you better find a way, boy. Yeah. I've done some claustrophobic <laughs> stuff this season. Like, I went to different haunts. Alley Haunt and Hayride, there was this one part where you had to go through a meat. Uh, like a. You were like in a. What was like it? Like a meat locker. It was a morgue. A morgue. You were in a morgue oh. and you had to go through one of those. Like, oh, no. Where they put like the like bodies in? Yeah. Oh, like in a table? Uh, I did an escape room once, um, and that was how we started the escape room. And so you get put on the table and they push you in oh, and as no. soon as you're in they keep pushing you so like your head is out so you're never like stuck in the little box thing. Mm -hmm. But my friend is really claustrophobic I guess that's yeah. the word. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and she didn't want to do it. She was like, no, like I can't get into this box. So I feel we like asked I the guy, um, she asked the guy, she was like, can I just cuddle her? And <laughs> oh, we, we were cuddled up in the same box. We were like cuddling like this close and like, <laughs> they pushed us through and it was funny. It I would have been the same more way. reminded me of it, and exactly it just. I did way. that, and then at Queen Mary, I did one where. Uh, you go to the meat grinder. Oh meat yeah, freaking! I, like, I know which one you're talking about. That, that one, that one was actually beast. a little bit yeah, more bigger. That maze is fun. The one in the morgue though was like I was like squishing <laughs> through, and I only did it so I could get good content, and the, that was the only reason. If I had to get content, then do I would have done vlog. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you, if you watch our vlog from that. You hear me asking, is there an alternate route? Please tell me there's an alternate route. <laughs> the she route. finally pointed me. I was like, thank God, because I'm not going through that right now. Yeah. Um, it's safe to say a, a Special Ops Infected is probably the hardest working maze at Not Scary Farm. Because, I'm biased, but yeah. Because just, just for the sole purpose of everyone, especially as a squad leader, you're not only a scare actor, but you're also guiding the maze. You're, you know, you're, so you're doing a little bit of everything, and everybody cycles through everything. Um, and the energy for that maze every night we went through was always at 110. Uh, percent And that, that line was never short. Yeah, there was oh, always the line was always like 120 minutes long, two hours. I was a long. closer, so yeah, that thing was never short. Yeah. <laughs> what time would you get out? Because I was curious, like, what do they ever? It was kind of like, like a we scare were zone. So, that's why we would like, be. We we're like usually would aim to get out of the maze by 2:30. So, the goal was always half an hour or less. So towards the end of the night, like we'd try and get as many people through as we could, but towards the end of the night, we'd really just like push them just through push as much as through. we could yeah. without like ruining the experience. Cause we were like, we want to go home. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Just get usually, yeah. cause you know how usually forget about the get zombies, the just get out of here. they pause you right there. But at the end of the night, when we're trying to go home, there was no pause. They'd be like giving them the get to the sewers, you know, shoot the out, shoot we, the we sewers getting while they're going that. like pushed through. <laughs> yeah. but, cause yeah. like, I know we've walked by it. Cause like we parked on the Western one before the Western mm -hmm. exit and we'd be Western. going, um, we'd be going past and there's like still a queue line over like outside of the lodge, like right by the, the water ride. Yep. And you're yeah. like, damn, it's already like one thirty, and there's still like a 50 yeah. minute wait on this. Yeah. During I, those prime weekends, that was, it was rough. rough. It I was think, rough. I don't think I got to my car on some nights till like 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Just kill it, but yeah, at least by the time I know, you, you home, didn't even you have like makeup 30. and stuff to take off, and you were still getting out that late? That's crazy. And by the time that, you guys were just done, you were ready to go to bed. Yep. By the time you got <laughs> home, it was boom. Um, every night going into the maze, what is something you guys did to hype your guys' stuff up? Like, listen to music? Mm -hmm. What would you guys do? Like, cheer each other, you know, get in a group and cheer each other up? Or how would you, what would you guys do to get in the mood every night? Um, we had, like, team meetings, kind of, before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they'd pull everyone together. Um, usually it was outside of the maze, but towards the end of the run, it started being in bravo yeah before and they just tell us like hey you guys did good last night blah 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 this is what we want you to do tonight like or to work on mm -hmm. watch out for this do this blah blah yeah. blah and then um they'd usually send the zombies off and then we'd have a smaller squad leader meeting just like okay we need to like watch out for this do this blah blah, blah. just essentially the same thing but targeted more towards the squad leaders mm -hmm. um and then they'd send us off and so like that was kind of like the beginning of our ritual or whatever but then it was usually what i did was i would go fill my water bottle up and then just kind of hang out until they'd say over the radio is like okay like get in the maze get everyone in the maze yeah. yeah um i i don't really i would kind of towards the end i'd start running through the maze right before we started and kind of just like let's go um, but I, I didn't really have like a true like So pretty ritual. much running and, every, and the meetings would kind of get you pumped then just kind of yeah. every night. Yeah, a lot of the times I didn't get there till close to right before it started because of school and work and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I didn't really have time to do a whole like, oh, I'm going to get ready and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was just a... Uh, I gotta go. I can't. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. That's, kind of, yeah. that's kind of how mine was, though, because I was in makeup during the meetings every yeah, yeah. night. So I did not go to a single <laughs> meeting because they would start at like what six fifteen, and then my makeup was at six twenty. So they told us, you know, if you're in makeup, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. But by the time we get out of makeup, it'd be like six forty. So people were starting to go in the maze, 
and that was pretty much my thing like once I was out of makeup I would just go get my water bottle fill it up and I would go into Bravo and just kind of like go in there and stretch and then just like wait for it to kick yeah, in when down. the music would kick on though that's that's, that's when, when it happens just that's when everyone's like ah it's time let's do it and the, like break the breakage of your eardrums when the music comes on <laughs> in that maze that's when you know it's time to start <laughs> Oops, all right um so like i said this maze every night brought that 110 percent energy and i think that's what really brings this maze to life every every night that it was on um when this concept was first brought out it was originally in camp snoopy mm -hmm. and it was such a big thing that i remember looking at it the first year it came out and i was like so jealous that i didn't go that year because it was one of those things where i was like damn this is so cool yeah. like you know you play the video games and you watch the movies and you just want to get immersed into that world yeah. um and then as it went on, they moved it to the Mystery Lodge, and they kind of they gave it more of a of a story at that point. And I love the whole story, the whole lore behind this. Um, it's supposed to be like a modern day Calico, right? Yeah. Yeah. So everything's all what you would see today, and 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 I really I really dig that. Did did since the with the whole lore of the Sarah Marshall thing this year? What, did you was there any did they did they update anything to kind of tie that in or no? Not to my knowledge. Not really. No. I had, like, in my own mind, the thought that, like, maybe the curse never really went away oh. as time went on. That's not a canon thing. I'll That's put a that theory. It's not, it's a fan theory for fan me. Theory. I thought that that would be, like, a cool thing. But it's not, like, there wasn't any kind of explicit... It's an, uh, it's an official it's thing for It's tied to the album. curse or yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's tied. There is, like, all the whole, like, it started in the Grand Sierra, and then, like, they got Patient Zero, and they tried to send him off and then he went missing there was like this whole thing that led it up to the city and I then like that that's when they moved it to mystery lodge i really like that a lot because it's like if you really think about the whole curse of, of sarah marshall like this is what this proves that it never went away there's yeah. a zombie apocalypse going on that was just a joke <laughs> that that was something i was talking to with um with jen uh, tootsie one of the saloon girls because mm -hmm. we met at castle park last year so we're good friends, and we were just joking about it. I was like, "Oh, you know, we're both in Calico. Like the curse never went away. Like we're kind of, we're in a way, we're still kind of working together here." But other than that, it's strictly a fan theory. <laughs> well, if you think about it, those zombies always come right back to life. Right? Nothing stays yeah, dead. It stays dead. In Boom. <laughs> All right, there you go. You heard it here, John. Cook. That's how you're gonna come together. <laughs> That's how you're gonna bring it back for next year. Yes. So. Revamped uh, twenty. Uh, Throw a Sarah Marshall somewhere in there, and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised Sarah there wasn't an Easter egg for that, considering how many there Any was. What? An Easter egg. Do you guys have a favorite there. Easter egg in there? I like the Paranormal Ink billboard a lot. I, I thought that. that was really cute. It's like right when you walk in the main street, you just yeah. end up. And it's it's right like there. up to the right. There was a Paranormal Ink billboard, huh. <laughs> which is cool because it's actually supposed to be a TV show. That's why. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a good advertisement, and it's also advertising the maze. So if you haven't gone through it yet, then boom. Yeah. Oh, Paranormal. Oh, Ink, right. I'll that's that something next. you have to do. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, let's talk more about them shenanigans. This maze, is, this maze is, is famous for that, man. We've heard so many great stories from our friends yeah. Bree and Jackie. Yeah. Um, who shout out to them was the reason why this is happening right now. Yeah. Big shout out. Thanks, Jackie. Of, Jackie's been getting you. a lot of shout outs on the podcast. Like, Jackie's too. amazing. They're Jackie both amazing. amazing. We talk like every day about various things. Yeah. And then lately it's been about a werewolf short we might be working on. Ooh. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. first. Self Teaser. selfless plug. Right. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm excited. We're full of shameless plugs. I have no information plugs, other than that. I'm already yeah. pumped. Let's go. Um, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so worried. ladies, the floor is yours. Tell us some a lot of these shenanigans. Oh, where do we begin? Yeah. <laughs> so so where many. do we even start? I think you begin in September. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> September, uh, what was the date? 20th they opened? Or 19th? And the 19th. 19th. September 19th, 20th. Yeah, the 19th. 2019. Um, let's start off with uh, the, Ooh, the, the infamous story. The helicopter turn. The infamous. Oh! <laughs> so oh. The, you weren't there okay, for it, were yeah. you? I heard about this story and I took pictures after the math, but I wasn't actually there to witness it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I was. It sounds really I funny. Was. But I, I witnessed like half of it. I was over by the phone booth 
the one that Brie had gone into after it <laughs> happened. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't know what had happened until Brie was in the phone booth just absolutely dying. And I had never seen her break so bad. <laughs> so I'm like covering her. Like I'm pretending to attack the phone booth because she's just, she's just out. <laughs> like she's cracking up and I'm covering the phone booth and I'm like, what is wrong with her? Is she okay? And so the group finally passes and I, and I go over to her and I'm like, are you good? Like, what happened? Because now I can tell that she's laughing. At first I thought something was wrong, and then I was like, oh no, she's laughing about something. And then I look over and I see Vincent laughing at something, and I'm like, Brie, what happened? <laughs> and she's just like, she can't even talk. She's like, he broke. And he points, she points at the missile launcher, and I look over, and they're like, the missile launcher's gone, and everyone's just losing their mind <laughs> over the missile launcher being broken. And like, all their laughter just kind of died off on me. And then I was cracking up for the next group. And they're like, as a zombie, it's a lot harder to cover up laughing yeah. during a group. Like, yeah. squad leaders, you have, like, more wiggle room. I would you always all could just be die. Going off of each other. I'd always just, like, But I'd have to, like, corner. knock it off and, like, scream at people to stop laughing at this stupid missile launcher <laughs> that he just broke. I think what I found more funny about it is Vincent picks it up. And freaking uses it. As that's a when I started dying because I saw it like I was still over by the phone booth because that's just like where I was most of the time when I would scare. But I could see like from the corner of the helicopter, I could see him. Ha I could I saw him with it on his shoulder and then going yeah. over to Alpha Street, so yeah. that first street you go to. Yeah. And I was dead. I was like, this is ridiculous. Now we've heard all perspectives. Now we've heard Breeze, <laughs> we've heard Vincent, and we've even heard the from zombie. zombie. Like it's just it's freaking it's everywhere, yeah. man. That's, that's all of hilarious. us. All of the zombies were like, "What is going on?" Because <laughs> like, the like four. Because then the other ones over on the other side saw me dying, and it was just kind of like a chain of, "Oh, this happened," and then they're like, "What happened?" Like, "Oh, this happened." Oh, really? No way! Like, <laughs> now, Ryan like Fortnite. Does he play Fortnite a lot? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That I was like, okay, he plays Fortnite a lot, so it's a great you know. game, and it's free. Oh, I don't play it. I know, I know, I know. You should, we're you should. We're advertising Fortnite. I'm good. We're not, we're not sponsoring Fortnite. Fortnite, this podcast uh, if you want to sponsor to you. us, you know. See you after appreciation on 2020. You can <laughs> uh, that, that's hilarious. I think that's uh, the fact that I'm glad they didn't get in trouble for it, first of all. Yeah. Because I know, I know I've heard stories in the past where if someone breaks something, they're, they're gone. It, there was definitely a talking yeah. to. I definitely... A, you need to be more careful, like, we yeah. can't be breaking things, like, yada, yada, yada. And um, we're going to deadbolt it down. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to bolt it to the floor so they all don't kick it or something. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Um, but I think it was at the point where this maze was like, okay, it's the end of the run, things are going to start breaking. Yeah. Like, be more careful, don't intentionally break things. Yeah. And I, and I, which he did I, I don't think they intentionally meant to break it. Which no, he was, didn't. It was just one of those things where they were just having fun with the whole. Exactly, the and whole he told, he it. like reenacted it for me, and he showed me. He was like, I wasn't even on it. Those things like, are loose. Like, like yeah, even at scare just, school, like, stepped over they were like, it. "Be careful around the missile." And they know that those things were loose. Yeah. They yeah. already knew ahead of time. They warned us ahead of time. Like the missile launchers are a little unstable. Yeah, you know, be careful around those things. Don't like they warn the zombies not to like not to die on them yeah yeah if you are dying around them not to like put your weight on them or anything like that Definitely. so so it just happened to be a oh no i'm gonna use this this is yeah. a good opportunity <laughs> i'm gonna make it work may as well work with what i got yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> did you guys get to uh, experience at all this year as as regular guest so you did okay yeah what did you guys think of the event overall it was awesome this year i loved it it reminded me why I wanted to work. Yeah, in the beginning. honestly, that's that's yeah. the vibe it had. I was trying to think of it like all season. Like, there's a different vibe this year that makes oh, yeah. it so much better. I mean, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, it, that leads it felt like this going question. for the first time again. Why? Why did you all become uh, monsters at Knox? Ooh, um, the six million dollar question. <laughs> I know, right? Two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen. My friend and I. Because I've been going to haunt for a few years now, mm -hmm. but it was always just like one or two visits a year. Yeah. And then 2016, my friend and I bought passes and we went every weekend, like at least once every weekend. Hey, we ended weekend up going. Squad. Yeah. Yes. We ended up going Sweet, like. Man. We ended up going like nine times throughout the run, and our parents were like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> that sounds like your mom. They, they were like, heard it's, my mom like every weekend we go to Notch. She'd be like, "Oh, where are you going this weekend?" Because we had a whole schedule. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we're going 
a notch. You go, again. Again? again? <laughs> Did you get bored of that place? I'm like, you don't Never. know. Never. You don't witness the shit it's, we witness. It's not only that, it's not the same. No, it's Every not. time you go, there's something, something else different happening. going on. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we had gone so many times, and then she went away to college. So I was like, well, now, who am I supposed to go with now? Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm going to be here anyway. I might as well be getting paid for it. Yeah. And so I tried it. Um, that Facts. was the first year, it to my Facts. knowledge, that was the first year that they implemented the everyone auditions rule. Yeah. And I wasn't ready for that. And I don't have any sort of like theater acting background or anything. So they were like, okay, you can audition. I was like, I'm going to what now? So I literally kind of just stood in the room and went, ah, like, <laughs> I, I'm not a scary person. <laughs> and so uh, not I even mean, like that. I always <laughs> see someone ah. doing that. Um, and so they, I think they kind of pity through me and infected, and here I am. There you are. Nice. <laughs> Stuck you with Elmer in the place with my shenanigans. Yeah. There you go. What about you? Uh, kind of a similar situation. I started going as a guest my mm -hmm. freshman year of high school. Nice. Uh, so that was like 2012, and that was because one of my friends at the time had an extra ticket because like her boyfriend couldn't go or something like that, and she knew I was a. I liked Halloween and everything else, but I was like a pansy. Before that, before <laughs> I went to Knott's, I was like, I am I would see the commercials on TV and I'd be like, no, I am Dude, not they got, doing that. They got down on those old commercials. The Remember? old commercials were scary and I was like, I'm never going to those. If I'm going to go, like, I'll be at like 20 or something. I'm they, never going to go. Yeah. And she dragged me there mm -hmm. and my life was changed. <laughs> yeah, it changed. Yeah, I don't know if you ever saw them, but they were like, they would put people like, it would be a scenario where someone would be somewhere in like a band and all of a sudden you see like a clown or something. Yeah, that's around. the one. I would watch and that and I was like, like uh -uh. All, you hear, all you would hear was a scream and it would say, Not scary for them, where scary nightmares farm. are made. That's yeah. what it is. Like, there are really <laughs> creepy commercials and those like part of the reason I didn't want to go, but I went and. Um, and then it was like the yeah <laughs> i went i was so scared that i was going to be the guest that like doesn't want to punch somebody but does and like gets us kicked out like that's what i was afraid of i was like yeah. i don't want us to get in trouble because i don't know how i'm going to react to something like this but uh we went through the first maze i ever went through was actually the one that was still in the mystery lodge at the time so it was cool getting to work mystery lodge nice. as my first maze as well but it was terror of london at the time yeah. which was like the old jack the ripper maze that they had oh, yeah that was such a good it was it was really awesome yeah, and i was like okay this is actually kind of fun mm -hmm. and we went i loved all the scare zones and then yeah we just had a good time definitely um i was going back every year since every year since <laughs> to this year too because i got to go as a guest this year so i still have my streak <laughs> that's great do you guys all have a favorite maze um from the history of nods yes i do do you Infected. Infected. <laughs> <laughs> Great choice. Infected to my top three. Uh, my favorite maze was Forevermore. So it was the one before Edgar Infected Allen moved Poe. into Mystery Ledge. I've heard nothing but good things. So I, this was my first year going. To, oh, my second time going to Nods. Went in 2009. Terrified. Went back this year. Ten years later. Ten years later. <laughs> redeemed nice. myself. Well. But man, I wish I would have went through forever more because I've heard nothing but good it things about awesome. that man. You redeemed yourself well until you fell asleep on a bench. <laughs> oh, I saw that. How do you fall episode? asleep at haunt? I well, know, well, dude. Um, I can fall asleep in ghost anywhere. town that's of all places. You've been getting a lot this season. I, I can fall asleep literally anywhere. And in ghost town. In ghost town. In ghost town. In Kmart. In K <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know how we did it. Ghost Town's dark. It is really dark. That's the only way I can see it happening. Other than that, like, <laughs> I hear all the thunder jokes and I'm like, I ain't sleeping here. No this way. guy will eat, drink a monster and like six cokes and still fall asleep. I don't know how he <laughs> does like, it. like me during haunt. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he does it, but it, it's I've got a special set of skills. Very <laughs> <laughs> specific, that's that's specific be, skill set. That's gonna be his freaking haunt character right there. The freaking Sandman. <laughs> the you know, Sandman. You know, fall asleep. Uh, we got a couple fan questions actually. Uh, the first one actually comes from Jacqueline Winters herself. Oh my gosh. How was the transition from zombie to SL? Um, it was very different. It was. I had an idea of what a squad leader did mm -hmm. just from being friends with all of them and like especially with Jackie my first year we were very close and so like I saw what she did and like I was able to I was all I was always like I could be a squad leader like there's <laughs> no way I couldn't be a squad leader I could do this easy and I mean like I did I I was a squad leader so um but it was different I think the thing that I missed most was I didn't get to scare mm -hmm. as much like 
I would scare, I would hide behind the wall, and when groups would come through, I'd go, let's go. Yeah. And they'd yeah. jump, and they go, ah! And they go, hey! hey. <laughs> Wait, you're not scary. scary! They get so um, offended when the squad leader pulls hey. out like that. So I've seen it. They're like, wait a second! <laughs> That's not a zombie! And I jumped. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> um, it definitely had a lot more responsibilities than I thought it would. Be, yeah. Like, being a squad leader. Like, I knew there was responsibilities and stuff, but I definitely saw... I think my biggest issue as a zombie was like, why are the squad leaders not paying enough attention mm -hmm. to what's going on? And then as a squad leader, I was like, you're not paying enough attention to this because there's 8 million different things going on. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure everyone's not yeah. getting in the zombies' faces and stuff. Definitely. So I think that was the hardest part about it. Yeah. yeah. But I kind of had an idea of what to expect. Awesome. So. Um, let's see. Daredevil29 asked, when did you first get into special ops? I think that's just that's a general, just general like even as a guest or, or just even as a guest for me it was 2015. 2015. The last year it was in Camp Snoopy. Oh, so you get to experience in camp. Snoopy. Yeah, it was I'm crazy jealous. in camp. It was crazy in camp. Oh my gosh, I was so winded. I like thinking about how much running around the squad leaders would have had to do over there, mm -hmm. like just from going through it. And then after hearing, like, John and all them, like, like stories and telling yeah. about how these squad leaders would be running, like, 20 miles a night. Yeah. Or more. I'm just standing there like, dude. <laughs> they like, got nothing on us. What's going on? Run, you know? Yeah. Um, I was like, I could barely run around Bravo and not be exhausted at the end <laughs> of the night. I can't imagine running around all of Camp Snoopy as a squad leader. Like, I was winded just from running around as a guest, but it was awesome. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I can see why they took it out of Camp Snoopy, too, because they had to set that up, like, every night. They yeah, were they were talking they about like that at the... A 15 to 20 minute banquets. window of setting it up setting it perfectly. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Like moving all the trucks and the containers and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was... Didn't Cody, like, it took our entire bat didn't team. Didn't Cody say he would have to like get all of the bats to yeah. get it done? Like, it took like the entire There was no setting team. up anything else until Infected was done yeah. for the night. Yeah, that makes sense. And a lot of it mostly for setup is just kind of like fog and stuff. Like backstage or like the people who have to do like other management mm -hmm. type things or yeah whoever are in charge inside mazes so i can i can see why because that maze looked like i mean the way they set that up it was all of camps it was, it was like most of camps it was, yeah, it was, yeah it was like i don't ever, i don't it was like the all of the first half of it yeah, i think yeah. the furthest back we went that i remember was like out of when you get out of the cave mm -hmm. i don't think it went too far past like the cave area that you can go climb around in yeah. but it was still a lot of space didn't it like start it didn't like what there were two the starting village? parts. There There's Alpha and Bravo. Yeah. yeah, there were two okay. starting points. All right, so you had the option to go to either. So was mm -hmm. it a different experience every time, or is it kind of would it always of? be the same story? In, essentially, it's, I think it was the same story. It was just different different scenery. Routes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. So I wish I can. Yeah. But we all know Charlie. Oh man, don't even start with that one. That podcast is as of this recording is not out yet. It will be <laughs> from, hopefully Saturday. So, uh, <laughs> since it is out, and you guys haven't heard it yet, I will, I will tell you the story. One of the characters we had on, his name was Aaron, and I don't know how he pulled this off. I, to this day, I'm just, after hearing the story, I was like, how did you do that? He... And the, among a ton first of First off, is... he called it a VIP maze. Okay. And a VIP maze is essentially uh, something that they made up right on the spot, wasn't on the map. No one knew about it. Okay. He, uh, that little alleyway where Sad Eye Joe was at. Okay. Was, um, Bravo, or was it? It was Charlie. Charlie. For special ops. Not on the map, but what had happened was he. It sounds like some ultimate shenanigans. <laughs> this is got, real shenanigans. <laughs> he got all the scare actors in on it. Oh my god. And they all, there was like a ton of scare actors in that little alley. And he even got one of the people that holds the signs and made a fake sign and everything. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the maze, wow! He called the maze infested. Infested, <laughs> yeah. And he started. He got up and made the announcement that there's so the line. A new calling, maze right now, guys. Yeah, just oh, for tonight. Man. Yeah, and he go. He got the maze and he got the line going all the way to the entrance of Ghost Rider. Oh my gosh! No, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, Eventually, you know, I mean, he was getting people in, and he had like a clipboard and everything oh in character my. and everything. He had a oh clipboard my gosh. And was seeing if everybody's name was on the list. He actually got one couple to give, give him a funnel a cake. Funnel cake. <laughs> Just to get it. <laughs> his girlfriend was eating a funnel. It was a brand new funnel cake. She was about to eat it. He goes, 
If you give me that funnel cake, I can get you guys in the I fucking get you line. Guys. Oh wow! And that's he, like amazing. the boyfriend thought about it for a second and like took the funnel cake and gave it to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they walk through that the maze and he goes, book. "Okay, the whole point of the maze is you know what's special after you have this gun. Well, this one you're gonna have to finger it." <laughs> and they walk through and like you know you have that's all these great. ghost town monsters that. just you know <laughs> doing the roll and everything. And he goes, when some of them walked out, some of them were disappointed. Some of them just were confused. And some of them were like, oh, my God, that was really cool. <laughs> I would have been the third one. Eventually, management yeah. came down and flashed everyone out. And, that was uh, my question. How long did it take for management to I was there? just surprised he didn't get fired. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how did you even pull my, all of this It really must have been a slow night. He goes, yeah. he, I, I guess he was saying the guy that they got to hold the sign actually was going on break. And he was all in for it because he does that regularly. So... That's yes. amazing. I love it. Wow. So yeah, that is the story of Bravo or you know Charlie Charlie's Streets. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Streets. The unofficial but somewhat official That's amazing. Charlie Streets. Oh that man, is, I would have killed that. That is some <laughs> ultimate, that we'll, is some ultimate I don't think we'll ever see VIP mazes ever again in the history of <laughs> Oh, probably not. Unless someone really wants to risk it all on the final night. <laughs> They're it. like, I'm not coming back, let's if do it. If someone does that, I will guarantee film it. Because that is something I'm not missing out on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Victoria Vigilance 2.0 Victoria. asks the glow stick story. Oh, <laughs> no. The glow stick story. She okay. knows. I knew you that's, would know that's, it. That's Because I didn't know it. I was like, oh, glow stick story. She asked me fun. a couple things on my story, too. Um, but she didn't ask about the glow stick story. <laughs> oh, man. She saved that. <laughs> she saved that. She like, saved it for the... <laughs> she wanted me to be off guard, and I am. <laughs> so, the glow stick story is... Um, I don't remember which week at this point that it was. It was towards like maybe halfway in, a little over halfway into the season. Uh, one of the zombies, Barbie, she's like one of the OGs. She did every year. She brought glow sticks just to like for fun backstage. Yeah. And some of us on Bravo brought, we had our glow sticks with us when we went into the maze and mm. we just kind of like had them there just as like little trinkets. Like, oh, we got little gifts before we started, and it's really sweet. And it divulged into throwing them at each other, oh, and then eventually <laughs> it divulged into throwing them over to Alpha Streets, and at one point, Alpha Streets started throwing them back. So it just started turning into, like, this whole war of glow sticks, and, like, our leads were, like, our leads were so annoyed by it, but it was so funny. We even... At one point, one of the zombies, like, you know how there's, like, the zombie prop on top of the car? Yeah. We put glow sticks, like, all over it, <laughs> and we, like, made it a little glow stick crown, and we were like, this is our king, and, <laughs> <laughs> and there was, there was one, gr I'm pretty sure there might have been, like, a group or two that was, like, at the box truck while we're all just over there, like, reaching <laughs> for the, like, for our king, of, like, I think we named him Fernando or something, but he's just, like, covered in all these glow sticks, and we're just like, yes, Fernando. <laughs> like, all these zombies are just worshipping this glow stick zombie on top. But you gave him the most random my, my favorite thing, though, was when Alpha started throwing the glow sticks back. So, like, I think that's kind of how it started. Is like, one of the zombies just out of nowhere just, like, chucks a glow stick over to Alpha. And then, like, yeah, literally just yeets it over to Alpha. And, uh... A couple nights later, this is still happening, but finally, there's a group coming through. We had just tossed it over. Mm -hmm. And... There's a group coming through. We're in the middle of this group, and I look up in the middle of what I'm doing because I would like just throw my head all over the place. And I look up, and I just see a glow stick <laughs> flying back over and almost hitting people, like landing right in front of me. And I broke instantly because, like, oh no, they're throwing them back. Like this is a war now. At so, that point, you just yell, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> And, and like, the group finally leaves, and I'm in the phone booth. I'm the one in the phone booth laughing at this point. And they're like, what happened? And I pick it up, and I'm like, they threw it back! And all the other zombies are like, oh, it's on! <laughs> and yeah, so we just, we're just throwing just them everywhere. Just them animal, just throwing them. Even after one of our leads was like, okay, no more glow sticks. <laughs> we just, like, brought in, like, ten times more glow sticks the next day. This is going around, too. The zombies are stubborn, okay. Um... This little guy. This is Stub. Oh. Stub. 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 This is Stub. Uh, Stub was famous this haunt season. He was. I had no idea how famous he was going to get. He's even got his own Instagram account. He does. It's Stub.Pumpkin. Stub.Pumpkin. He follows us. He does. Even big fans. Big fans of the channel, huh? Oh, big fans of Stub. Yeah. 
He's oh, I, thought I, I thought I was following. I thought I was following him, and it turns out I wasn't today. So I immediately followed. Him. I saw that. I was like, I thought I was following him. I really did. No, he's like, I have to follow him twice. I love him that much. I, I thought I was following him because yeah. I, I saw a lot of this guy. It might not have been at first because I just made the account public today, so oh, that okay. might have been what it was. That's probably what it was. But um, Checkers the Clown wants to know what Stubbs' story is. Well, he's just a happy little pumpkin. Um, That's been through so much. <laughs> he has been through more than he's ever been through in his entire existence. Uh, I got Stubb at Haunt in like 2016. Okay. Because Stubb was like 10 bucks and I was like, I want that. Yeah. And it was just like on the way out. So I didn't really have him during the event. It yeah. was on the way out. You know how they have like the souvenir stand right by the exits? Yeah. It was there, and I was like, okay, that's really cute. Like, how much is that thing? And then I heard it was only, like, maybe $10, and I was like, impulse decision purchase and the best one I've ever made. <laughs> and so um, I had a day off, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I should bring my pumpkin because he's from Haunt. Like, he's going to go back home, and the <laughs> monsters just went to town. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you've seen, you probably saw the videos. I saw the you videos. saw the videos. I went on the, the, the page and yeah. I saw the videos, and I was so now the he's one. he's very scared of hostile. Yeah, hostile he's is just terrified a, of hostile. I'm not terrified of hostile. I will go up against hostile one and one. You say that now. No, I know I will. <laughs> Stop said that once too, and now look at him. He's covered in stains, and I'm he has like a battle scar. Season. Hostile's no. mine. Too sweet, hostile. I'm gonna go up to him, and he's gonna do that, and then he's gonna go. Aww. <laughs> But yeah, he, he had a lot of fun uh, monster encounters outside of the Hostel one. So he got he got freaking beat down by Hostel, but he also was just like a ball for a lot of the monsters. They were just like throwing him around all over the place. They even uh, used him as a scare at a couple points I've seen in some of the videos. I did. You did too? <laughs> I did. He got some good scares and infected on closing night. It was pretty funny. <laughs> I snuck him in and he was helping me scare. And I would just like over by the helicopter and I would I would like be holding it because my zombie kind of varied from either being like this little girl or just like this crazy lady. Mm -hmm. um, and I was on I guess I was on little girl mode for closing night because I had like I had this pumpkin and I was just kind of like I don't even know what I was doing. I was like witch left for dead two status like <laughs> crying with it and I would like follow somebody and just wait for them to notice it. I'm not even doing anything. I'm literally just following them like this. And they would look it's over like, oh. and they would just see this thing in their face and they would jump. And I'm kind of like, <laughs> you got scared of a pumpkin. <laughs> and he got some really good jumps out of it. I remember. And he also I got stolen. To, yeah. I, I, would, later. I would run nice. through. All the time. <laughs> I'd do marathons. And I saw her scaring with it. So I waited and I was like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And so she's sitting there holding it. And hold it. I went up and I just went. And, yeah, and you're it. not the only one. I know I'm not the only yeah. one. But I took it and I ran and I ran and I was through. Like, it's gone. It's I gone. ran into no, Mystery yeah. Lodge where <laughs> the squad leaders could go because that was like where their break room was. Yeah. And so I watch her. She she's chasing me and like I turn around and then she's standing outside like my pumpkin. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so sad, sad I took girl. very good care of him. And we yeah. went on many adventures. I stuck him in my vest. They saved so we run together. through. Nice. Um, at one point one of the other squad leaders was like, hey, can you like watch this spot for me for a second? I'm gonna go run it and do whatever. I was like, okay, yeah, not a big deal. So I was standing there and I was kind of like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, stop, says go, go away. <laughs> and they kind of like, what is going on? <laughs> stop, says go that way. Go, 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 go. go. Um, there was a, the unofficial squad leader. Yeah, he has a squad leader gig. There was a tug of war at one point. There was? Yeah, between me and Goose. It was um, yeah. Goose was the first person to steal, steal it. it. He was another one of the squad leaders. Yeah. He was the first person to steal it from me, and I did not get it back all night. Like, because, hey. and it was funny because I after um, I brought him on my night off and all that happened, I brought him backstage that day that Goose stole him for him to go out with my friends in Ghost Town because I have a few yeah. other friends in other street zones and I was like I'm bringing the pumpkin guys <laughs> like we'll see if we can get them out there because there were some nights where it could happen and there was other nights where it's like no they're kind of harping today like we'll keep them in the box yeah but um <laughs> that was a night where like couldn't really get him out into the streets that night so I took him into the maze and then Goose just immediately took him and I was like still trying to get him to my friend on her break 
and I was like, hey, you know, I want it back at 10.30, please. Like, <laughs> like you have until 10.30 to give me my pumpkin back. And my lunch break comes around, and I'm not getting that thing back because Goose is nowhere to be found. And he would taunt me with it, and it turned into this whole scene of, like, this zombie attacking the squad leader over a pumpkin. Like, every time he would come into Bravo, I would see him, and he either had it, like, on his vest or, like, in one of his pockets or something like yeah. that. And the only way I would be able to get it back is if I, like, got it right. back yeah. and he's so fast goose is just like boom he's through like the maze a all truck. the time so and he's fast but he will could he's not afraid him. to like just if you're on his way <laughs> yeah he'll like push you like go oh push you all the way. he's he's crazy and i love it but i could not get my pumpkin back because of him see i'm a wrestling fan and i see someone run at me i think spear oh just spear we, absolutely i wrestled goose at one point guest came through it was, um, can't think of what it was called now. It was a night, it was the last night. There was half the good squad leaders and half the oh, bad. Oh, like, the, was it the, oh, militia? Like the, it was the militia? Militia night. Militia. 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 Because we were told um, to kill them. Yes. Yeah. So militia any of the squad awesome. leaders that were in red were militia. And so I was fighting with him and he was in red. So I'd be like, kill the militia, kill them. And guests are coming through like, what do we I do? thought it was killing <laughs> zombies. What's going on? That was something Wiggs did too. Oh my gosh. There was he was in red too. Mm -hmm. And he came up and I had Stub with me at this point. I was like sitting on the helicopter and I'm like crying. I'm like sobbing over this freaking pumpkin and I'm just like looking at people like scream crying. And it was like that was the night I actually learned how to scream. I usually like before that point I didn't know how to just like shriek yeah. on command. But because of this little guy I learned and I was just sitting there and I was crying over it and Wiggs comes up and he's doing the militia thing and he looks over at me and he sees me crying over this pumpkin and he's like shoot that squad leader because the other squad leader was in black he was like don't shoot the zombies protect the zombies and he looks at me and he's like she's just trying to protect her child shoot the squad leader and everybody was so confused they're just walking through like what do I do like what is going on there's this guy's telling us not to shoot the zombies the other guy's telling us to shoot, shoot the, zombies. the zombies this one's crying over a pumpkin <laughs> what's going on a little bit of madness every all everywhere. the other zombies are attacking us from every corner like that's hilarious now what was the whole was that just for a closing because the maze was it was done and they did that whole militia thing um yeah because it was something they did in camp snoopy yeah mm -hmm. and then so they were like we're they gonna bring it back, back for one night because there was a lot of squad leaders that had done it in mm -hmm. camp snoopy that it was just it like a, in. it was a thing. Kind of like for, a yeah, yeah, it was just a fun thing to do. Yeah. Because I remember we went through it, I was like, I don't remember this at all for the season. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just a fun thing yeah. to do and like a fun thing for the squad leaders to mess around with and have fun. It was, a fun, it was, it was really, really I'm glad fun. they yeah. brought it back because I awesome. didn't, I didn't experience that when I went through camp. Yeah, I only went through either. camp like one time mm -hmm. when I did it, so I didn't even know that that was a thing. But I, when yeah. I asked one of the squad leaders what was going on, because I didn't even know what was going on, I was like, okay. I kind of see what's happening, but please tell me what's going on. What's with the red? Like, what's going on here? And they gave me the whole story. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> this yeah, is so that, funny. Because I was like, I was, I was just as confused as it gets. I'm like, who, who do I shoot? I don't know who to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to shoot any of the human people, but at the same time, I was like, I was yeah. told to shoot them though. Game wise, it was the same thing always as shoot always. The ones in yeah. red. But it's just, even beforehand, they told the zombies, they're like, hey, you see somebody in red, you ah, kill, we'll just kill, kill. Instant kill. That's hilarious. And I had one zombie really betray funny. me in my room. Oh no! Oh, one. Um, so you got, you Anakin. Got, yeah. yeah, I thought of, I was like, she's gonna say Anakin. You got infected then, huh? No. Or you got a <laughs> No, <laughs> never. Goose killed me. Oh. Did he really? Yes. Damn. That's, that's why we started wrestling. That's because I was saw very upset. Right there. One of your own kills you. Was he militia? He was militia. He was militia, militia that's, killed you. So he wasn't one of her own. That not night. even a zombie. He went Walking Dead style. It was people versus people. What a, what a good send out. How did, did you have did you have a good kind of send out or is it just like that's it, I'm, I'm already dead? <laughs> no, it was um I didn't have any kind of like epic ending. Yeah. If, like any nothing where I got killed or anything like that, but he had stuff. The last run was definitely like when my zombie was like full on, like the most intense I've ever been. <laughs> so that was kind of like my send off. Mine was I would have loved to be the last run. The, yeah. last, the one last run was, was so emotional. It was so emotional. I it was crazy. completely broke character. I was sitting there, 
sobbing like oh, God, as soon God, as God. as soon as the group like i managed i don't know how i managed to stay in character probably because like it was my first year doing it so i didn't have all the years accumulating up to it but i heard about like how emotional the other squad leaders and stuff were and like you could feel it as soon yeah. as we were all walking back as soon as our group was done because this was like a management group there was mm -hmm. there wasn't really any like guests which guests. yeah so there were kind of two it was, final it was groups emotional. <laughs> it was one really big group and like the beginning of the group was just like past people that have worked it and like had like an emotional tie to it yeah and then the second half was like management, management and stuff and everybody else. um they had brought two guests in and they were the two that had come through every single night sometimes multiple times a night nice. so and it wasn't not just this year but like throughout the run of of oh, infected of wow. um so the there was one guy the one guy came through and every single time he come through to no fail he's dead serious shooting zombies like nothing else is going on yeah That's and it. then he went through and was shooting all the zombies and Every time he came up to someone, he'd give him a high five. Aww. And that's when I started crying. I was like, oh. wait, no! Oh, more high fives? Oh, man. Oh, but yeah, as God. soon as that group got through Bravo, like, I instantly started bawling. I was like, yeah. wow, that was the craziest I thing. I didn't even make it through that. Going, making, it was a big jump for me going yeah. from Castle Park to Infected. Because my room at Castle Park was literally some walls, a bunch of red lights, and, like, a couple dead people, and me. And that was Oof. it. I was Something. just like this this demon lady and I was like the finale room for my maze and so I had that room and like the hallway and that was that was it and then just like the soundtrack that would play and be on like a five minute repeat and we were all losing our minds in there <laughs> and then going from that to freaking infected was, it was like a big step it was a huge jump yeah. and what was funny is that I didn't want to work infected oh, nice. oh wow <laughs> um when I went to auditions I had like enough help and everything to where I had told them at auditions that I was interested in streets but I was like I'll take anything but you want to know specifically what I'm gonna do so I want to tell you like okay I want to do streets at some point but halfway through it I was like I'm getting amazed because I felt myself like shying away a little bit mm. I would find myself like in the back of the room at the end of every prompt and I was like okay this year's not my year let's see what I get <laughs> and so I go to the recruitment and they're like what are your favorite mazes and I tell them I'm like I really love dark ride and paranormal and then um, they asked the other guy that's next to me, who was uh, another zombie that wound up being in there. It was Julio. He was in my group too. Dom was in my group too. Okay. That was crazy. I'll tell that story next. <laughs> but um, they asked him and his favorite maze was infected. And I was kind of sitting there like, oh man, he really likes infected. I'm going to wind up getting infected too. And they looked at me, they're like, how do you feel about infected? I was like, it's in my top three, but like, I'd rather work something else. I don't really want to be a zombie. Because I didn't really know what being a zombie at Knots meant compared to what my thought of being a zombie was. Yeah. And then, but come scare school, like, within the first half of it, I was like, this is where I belong. <laughs> like, this is dope. This is so cool. They're like, we don't get an hour on, hour off, but <laughs> this is, this is great. The story, like, John was so, I think it was John that made me excited because he was so excited. Yeah. Like, Aspirin was this just, like, John's so baby. passionate about it, and oh, yeah. he read to us, like, the whole backstory of it. Like, he printed it out and gave us all copies of the backstory of Infected and everything yeah. else. It was, like, story time with John. <laughs> and it was amazing. Damn and man. so, like, once we did that first run and I got to put on Bravo, I was like, okay, that's kind of, that's, that's a big step up from what I did last year. And then we did, like, our first few runs of Scare School, and I was like, this is... This is where this I This is popping. Like, this, this is, is where I need to be in terms of a first year, so. Ow, that hurt my ear. That hurt my ear. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, because when we went to Midsummer Scream this year, them talking about it, you can just tell how passionate they were about this project. Yeah. From when they even considered... Everybody involved. Could, when they even considered putting it in Soak City, that's how <gasps> passionate they were. And I was so... I wish that would have worked out. Yeah. That would have been so uh, cool. I think the only There's problem, two reactions to that. It's either, oh, that would have been amazing, or, oh, that... Mm. <laughs> that, that There's mm. no way that would have worked. I think the only disaster the with that was probably the transportation across the street. Unless they would have... Because from what I was hearing, they wanted to transport people in vans. And yeah, they wanted off. to have them in the vans and like bust them over to yeah. brief them in the vans while they were going over to Soak City. The only, yeah, like, I think the only issue with that, with, with that arises is I don't know how, 
Unless they would have just blocked off a route just for that, but I would yeah. assume they would have to go through traffic and everything. But yeah. I mean, like I said, when I when I bring up blocking off a route, they could have closed off like one side of where like the marketplace is and like took them through that. Yeah, but even then, the yeah, traffic getting to haunt yeah, with those first couple of hours is. Just, that, I think that's ultimately. Oh, that's probably why they didn't. Yeah, do that. I mean, because you can easily walk people over to there if you really wanted to. But but nobody it's wants like, to do that. No one wants to do that, and then like the driving part was it's a good idea, but it's just the fact of traffic. Yeah. Which is a Who big knows? thing. Um, Cheerios asks, will you guys be doing mazes or streets next year? Good question. Who knows? Um, <laughs> the goal is streets. It's always been streets. Yeah. I don't even know if we'll be working on it next year, depending on how work and school and what's going on with that. True. Um, it always... As long as that works out, then... Right. The goal is to go out for streets, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Where Nothing's life will take guaranteed. You. Exactly. Yeah, I always gotta remember that. But same um, streets. Streets. I think I have, wants to. We end. have our plans. I don't want to speak them out to the camera, but streets and it's in the works. If you know, you know. Hmm? Can you speak out to me later? Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> it's in the works. It's all you guys. It's in know. the works. It's, if you, you know, you know. Show up for there are some people who know what I'm trying to do, and if you know, you know. There's you have to show up in 2020. Yeah. Haunt season to, to find up. out what she's gonna do. Yeah. It's a secret. Secret. It's a secret. Do you all have a favorite scare that happened this year? Mm. A couple. Mm. Oh, you can list a couple. a couple of them. I have a couple. I have probably two exactly that I can remember. Uh, the first one is when Buzzfeed came through. Yeah, so BuzzFeed Unsolved came through. Oh, yeah, they were there. We, they were, we were there. going to go that night. I think Let's we ended up going to Horror Nights. We're they were there, and so <laughs> I'm just doing my thing on Bravo, and uh, Brandon, director Brandon, mm -hmm. comes up to me, and he's like, can you go to sewers, or can you go to the finale room, cover it for, like, 15 minutes? There's a VIP group coming in. And I knew that BuzzFeed was going to be there that night, and I was just like, like, yes. That's them. <laughs> yes, sir. And so I go to the finale room Come and I'm in. like, I've never been in there. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Well, you were there for that, right? And I'm like, where do, where do I go? And then so um, Ashley told me like, go right here. There's like, it was like one of the juggernaut spots, but it was also the hallway to that very last pop out at the very end. Yeah. Yeah. And so for like 15, 10, 15 minutes, I'm like sprinting back and forth doing both of them. And it was so much fun. But so I'm doing my thing and I... When I heard that BuzzFeed Unsolved was coming through, I was like, I'm going to get Ryan. Like, I really want to scare Ryan because in all the videos, he's the he's the scaredy gets, cat, yeah. you know? And I, I'm doing both of the spots and I come back to the juggernaut spot where, like, you first come up the ramp, you turn in, and then it's like that left wall mm -hmm. that's just open. And I see Shane coming up the ramp. And I don't see Ryan anywhere. And I was like, did I miss him? What's going on? But I see Shane coming up the ramp and I run out and I'm like you know, going after the group, whatever, he's in the room at this point, and I, like, look at who is in front of him, because I can kind of gauge, like, how fast they're walking, and I figured out, like, the exact timing to bolt over through the hallway and just pop out at Shane at the very last second, <laughs> and he's so tall. He is so freaking tall, so I'm, like, kind of leaning out sideways and I do like like a like a reach for the face type of thing yeah and I scream at him and I find like he's not even looking he's like looking straight ahead so he doesn't see me because I'm down here yeah. <laughs> and I just see him like he's all focused even though there's nothing going on he was so into it and then I just see him like his eyes get all wide he's like oh <laughs> the classic sound that he makes when he's like mocking the ghost and everything and I was just like so happy <laughs> that I got to kind of scare him twice you're like, you're like, my life's complete so that was like the the fun like that was an accomplishment scare then the other one was just it was so funny just all for you yeah so on closing night after my lunch break i brought i started learning how to slide this year and i brought my <laughs> shoes i brought my shoes to work and i put my shoes on after my lunch break on closing night for that i had like an hour and a half from there to my next break and i was like there's no way i'm wearing these things for the rest of the night I'm technically not even supposed to be wearing them in the first place so I'm just going to wear them for this gap and I'm wearing them and I'm like making the little sounds with them and everything and I'm having a good time. It's a lot of fun. And I go in the phone booth and I figure out that if I like scrape my foot on the phone booth, it's super loud and yeah. it was like freaking people out. 
and it was awesome. And I'm doing that to the group, and I see this girl in the very back of the group turn around and start to go the other way, which is a no-no. Yeah. Like, you don't want people doing that in any maze. And I'm like, what is she doing? And I'm in the phone booth. She's, like, towards the ramp at this point, and she starts coming back my way. Mm -hmm. And all the other zombies, we're all like, what is this girl doing? Like, at this point, <laughs> it's the end of the season, so we're like, what are they doing again? <laughs> What's happening? And she's looking for her friends who had gotten stopped, and she didn't. Yeah. So there's, like, that separation. There's just this big gap between them, and I swing out. I make the super loud scrape sound on the phone booth, and I just start losing my mind, and I, like, charge at her and yeah. she freaks out and just like she's like no 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 wait i gotta get to my friends no stop like and i'm not stopping i'm coming for this girl and i just like pushed her back all the way up into the metro and like she has she had to go the rest by herself and i could oh, hear her man. friends in the back like oh my god wait no she, we got we got split up what's happening like no there she goes like they got her and Dan, the, the German squad leader, was the one who stopped him, and he didn't even see what I did. I Like, after they left, I went over to Dan, and I was like, did you see that? Like, that was so funny. <laughs> I split him up all by myself. Like, <laughs> I was just, like, so stupidly proud of, like, splitting this girl from her entire group of friends. That's hilarious right there. I think that's freaking It was funny. really funny. Wish I would have been there to see that. I was like a very that. proud zombie in that moment. I remember when you had your shoes on and I'd <laughs> done a marathon. I did a lot of yeah. marathons on closing oh, night. Oh, Sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, and you were saying that you were just like kicking and the little sparks came up. So I went over and I started kicking back at you. <laughs> I just had regular <laughs> shoes on. So I was yeah, like, she didn't have shoes on. And people were coming on. and they went, What? What? <laughs> what are they doing? Instead of like me killing her, I was just like just kicking, kicking at her. Each other. <laughs> Kicking back and forth. That was that's fun. <laughs> and there was one point where we're fighting, and she's like holding me back, and she's like, "Go, watch out! This one makes sparks." Yeah. And she like whispers in my ear, like, "Do the kick, do the kick." Yeah. <laughs> I tell you when they kick, the sparks would go up. Sparks. This one makes sparks, and then would kick, and people were like, "Oh no!" Because <laughs> you know, some people they'll hear that sound, and they're like, "Slider, yeah. no!" Slider. <laughs> like they're like, "Uh uh." But even though I didn't have anything else on, it was okay. just the shoes, but trigger. people were freaking out. Yeah, Should it's a trigger sound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said during your recruitment, you said you had another story. You were talking about with Dom. Oh, yeah. Oh, during auditions. So Dom was another squad leader who, he didn't do it in 2018, as far as I know. I think he might have done all he the other ones before He came that. a couple times. I don't think he did it in 17. Yeah, he had taken he's, a he's break. Done it he for had a taken while. a break, and then he was coming back to close it off. And he was in my audition group. I didn't really know who he was up until, like, before then. But so, <laughs> he spun every prompt to keep doing a squad leader. Like the first thing we got was werewolf, and we're over here trying to do werewolves, and I suck at being a werewolf. And I'm just like, oh great, this is the first one we're getting. So I'm like really trying to do this freaking werewolf. And all I hear is Dom in the back like, go, go, go! Get your silver bullets out! Or just whatever he was doing, like he spun it to where he was like leading this group of people through a bunch of werewolves. <laughs> instead of being a werewolf. And I just thought it was the funniest thing. She's like, go, I have go, one go. character I want to be. Yeah, and he like, was the squad every... leader the whole time, no like, matter what. She's like, let me guess, you've really want to be a squad I mean, they already, you know? Yeah, they already knew who he was, and he, like, you could see John laughing at him, like, it was, it was really funny. <laughs> and he's loud, too, I wasn't ready, I was he's like, whoa. You're <laughs> it's a, a small room fire. with Dom screaming at werewolves, it was echoing. You're all figuring, you're all freaking trying to be a werewolf, and you have this guy screaming at you, it's... Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> it helped a little bit. Yeah. I started chasing him a little there bit, I think go. that's what got me infected, honestly. Were you, were you I immediately was like, I'm gonna get this guy, like... <laughs> So the, the click between like the squad leader and monster was already there. So I just signed myself up for infected from the first prompt. Were you were you confused in the beginning when he just started yelling stuff? You were just like, wait, wait, what? Only for like a split second. Uh, when I at first I heard somebody yelling and I was like, who? Th we're supposed to be werewolves. Who's speaking? And then I saw it was it was Dom, and I was like, oh, it's the guy that's coming back as a squad leader. That makes sense. Yeah, he wanted it. Um, our last fan question comes full circle from Jacqueline Winters again. And she puts with a laughing emoji, how do guests hold their weapons? Every way they're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> you got I've one point. <laughs> so, them and... You have the serious ones who walk through like, 
Yeah, I'm a she, I'm a she, I'm a she, blah, blah, blah. You got me who acts like John Wick. Puts you have, side. yeah, you have people that come through like, yeah, I'm badass, pot, 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 like, we can do about it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the ghetto people. You have the ones that are scared. My favorites are the ones that are scared, but they're with their friend. So they're huddled like this and hiding. And they they're have the gun. Like, they're like, like, I don't know what's going on. It's funny. Um, it's really funny. Then you have the ones that like, I'm gonna put it in your face, like, I better than you, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, it's not like, ah. Those are the worst, honestly. <laughs> Those ones are the worst. Um, and then you have the, the ones that come into the phone booth when you're in there. Ugh. That you was good. The drunks. The drunk people who were doing everything. Some drunk people were kind trying of to make funny. An actual phone call. Yeah. <laughs> that was oh the my God. all season. I was just trying to make a phone call all season. And like the phone <laughs> there's no phone in there. So I would just be there's I a would phone like in look for it and get all passes though. And so on the final night, Goose is in front of Mama Foss's. Yeah. And he was taking the phone and like pretending talking to it or whatever. And he took it and he gave it to a guest and was like, Do you know what they're saying? <laughs> <laughs> and the guest is sitting there like uh-huh, they're saying, because he was talking into it before, and so yeah. the guest just started saying what he was saying. He goes, no, they're not. The phone doesn't work. <laughs> it was so I wish funny. there was a phone in the one on Bravo, because mm -hmm. I, I really wish there was, because that really turned into just, like, my little honorary backstory. It's like, I, I died trying to make a phone call or something, because I go. keep trying, I keep going into this phone booth, I'm, like, looking for a phone, and there's not there, and I just get super mad and turn into a psychopath. <laughs> but That's hilarious. That I've phone booth, cause... man. It's funny that you bring up that phone story because Vincent's told me that he tried to have some guy give the helicopter oh. pilot CPR. And oh, like, the amount of times I've heard this one. story. Yeah, okay, oh but Vincent's was successful. It's, yeah, it is was. he the one that had him going for like a really long time? Yes. So, oh, man. Like okay. Uh, the house, Vincent tells us much better than I do. Um, he told the guest, he was like, hey, like, you need, I need help, like, blah, blah, blah. Check his pulse. He's, yeah, he's checking the pulse, um, che and he's like, okay, do CPR on him, I'll go get help or whatever. He goes, gets a group through, checks on the guy, he's like, oh no, like, I feel a heartbeat, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Goes, <laughs> gets a group, checks on the guy, at this, like, a good, he does it for a good five <laughs> minutes, okay? And the guy's really into it, he's like, still going, and then, so he just, Keep getting groups through. He keeps telling, like, yeah, I keep going. Like, I feel a pulse. I feel a pulse. And then finally, <laughs> pulse. he he called our lead over the radio, and he was like, Cody, you need to get here now. Like, you need to see this. So Cody ran over. Like, what's wrong? What's going on? And he saw the guy, and from what I'm told, this huge smile just oh, pops man. up on his face, oh. and I Cody gets see, in on it. I can just see Cody now. Yeah, like, Cody yes. gets in on it, and he's like, yeah, I feel a, a pulse, like, you're doing great, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I guess a few minutes later, after they sent the guy through, Greg goes over the radio, and is like, guys, there's a missing male in the maze <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> The Some girlfriend of the guy, or the wife, or whoever she was. She started, like, crying or something, right? Yeah, she was at the exit, like, uh, he was right here, like, where is he? <laughs> and Greg goes, <laughs> well, missing. it is the zombie apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> so and, he, oh, and she lost it, and then turned. that's in, that's, yeah. Infected's got him now. <laughs> yeah. He became one, one of One of them. One, one of, them. of us. That's hilarious, man. That's I, I live for, like, little stories like that, because, like, it's stuff that you don't get to see, but when hearing about it, you're like, man, I wish I would. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about getting on this hot game. Man. Mm -hmm. man, you could cause so many shenanigans, it's not even funny. I thought we'd get fired. We would do stupid stuff. We could probably stuff. fire the first weekend just the <laughs> stupidest stuff we would come up with. I'd be like going in out of planners and acting like I was a tree. Depends <laughs> on where you wind up. Yeah, that's true. If I was in Carnival, they'd let that pass, probably. Mm, probably not. Probably not. If I was in the hollows, however. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hollow. That's, a yeah. That's a good man. scare like right there. Hollow, in the hollow. hollow and infected share the same energy. Yeah, because like. <laughs> we hollow started the there. Savages, man. The shenanigan energy is at the, the same amount level. of stuff we've heard from the people in the hollows this season was just hilarious. Yeah, I, I would just, I would look at Sammy like, did, did someone really just say that? Did they just do that? Did they just say that? Did they just do that? Say that? that? It'd be hilarious. Um. So yeah, now this maze is it's gone now, man. And it's 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 bittersweet and it's sad. We have the of course the tribute pin up there, just hanging above Frankenstein's head. Oh yeah, with the uh, Shadowlands. Yep, um, I have one on my backpack. It's uh, home. it's something that's bittersweet, man. Always gonna, bittersweet. Gonna miss it. It's got a special yeah. place in the heart. Always. I think that was my favorite maze this year, to be honest. 
Oh, man. I won't miss this the year, maze in general. My top three. I won't miss getting shot at every night. Yeah, I, I that's, the the, that's so terrible. Can't really hate with the guns. I evaded the guns this year. You didn't get hit. I did gun? not get hit. This is, and I'm like <laughs> keeping my shit because I didn't get hit at Castle Park either. Um, I would not get. I didn't get. So I'll clarify. I didn't get like specifically punched. There was the other zombies. I love the Bravo zombies. If anybody watches this, I love them because they got so beat up, Oof. and I felt bad because like I never got hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, the most hurt I got was just like I got a, a like a bug bite one night that sent me home, but like I never got punched by anybody or anything like that. The closest thing I got to hit by a gun was like if somebody was turning, or if I was maybe like standing a little too close and somebody's turning the corner, like their gun might tap me or something like that. But I never got like one of those in the face. There was a couple really close calls where I would scare somebody and they would turn and like I'm here and the barrel is like right here and I could just see the flash and I'm like oh it's like <laughs> literally just like there's barely room for Jesus in between. <laughs> barely room and, for Jesus. Leave some space. Oh man. man. There was so <laughs> most of it was just like really close calls but I never got like a gun to the face like a lot of the other zombies did. I, I've heard stories brutal stories of those guns man. You got hit a couple times. Yep, she's naughty. She's like, horror, yeah. stories. horror stories. Horror stories. Um, <laughs> this year, I managed to not get hit in the face, which is good. We like mm -hmm. that. Definitely. But it's because it was a squad leader. I was going to say, it's a yeah. little easier not to get hit as a squad leader. Um, just a little. Just a bit. Just a little depends, bit. Depends <laughs> who you are. That's true. <laughs> My first year, I got a gnarly black eye. Oof. Um, I got hit a couple times throughout the run, but usually it was just like in the arms or whatever. Mm -hmm. I got hit a couple times in the head. But it was kind of just like a, whoops, yep, yeah. you're there, too bad. Yeah. Um, Sometimes but one time I got a black eye, though, I, there. every time I scared, people would turn one way. So I was like ready for it. I was like, okay. So I went and I scared this girl and she turned the opposite way and just clocked Ooh. me in the eye. Ooh. And like, I sat there and I went, and it like made a face because it hurt. And she dropped her, she had the strap on. She dropped her gun, her hands went up and went, I'm so sorry. And I was just like, there's at least people, like, some going. people yeah. apologize. No, that like, was me this season, because I think yeah. I, uh, some, one of the characters, like, ran into me, but, like, I guess, like, he was trying to scare me, I was filming something, and mm. he, like, was right behind me, and I thought it was this guy, actually, I turned around, like, I was about to tell him, like, why the fuck are you so close to me? <laughs> and then I turned around, <laughs> turned, right, you're like, oh, right before oh. I seen it, like, I hit him, oh, like, it's about I, like, tapped into him, I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry I didn't see you, I thought you were my buddy, and he's like, no, it's okay, you're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of way. the time, a lot of people will like run into you on accident. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But you can tell the ones that are an accident, and the ones that are like oh, intentional. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I could because that was my biggest thing is like I try to stay out of the way. Yeah. Like especially when filming, um, like in the scare zones and stuff. Like I had spots where like I knew I would be okay, mm -hmm. just because I know they wouldn't go there. Or like if I was in this area, I knew I was kind of it was like my own little safe bubble. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was filming and. That was something I wish I could do more now, though, because, like, we have a lot of people that work in the mazes, and I wish that I can just, like, stay in the maze in, like, their area and just get footage and of them. watch, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just because, like, there's a lot of, I felt... I know, I wish we could have had somebody, like, take a video <laughs> of a run on Take Bravo a GoPro or somewhere. Yeah. I wanted to hide a camera in there just for, like, but the lighting in Bravo I have some, was terrible. I have some just a drone. Yeah. Just that a I drone sitting above Bravo. Yeah, just, just get drone. a drone over it. Yeah. Yeah. Air support. Air support. <laughs> that, that'd be good to like tie in too. It's like, oh, we yeah, did, the air support. We did that when um, there was one night there was like a helicopter flying over a whole bunch. I remember like, that, yeah. It was like a helicopter circling the park and yeah. then I heard a couple people were making air support jokes about that. But there was also... Ooh. Um, on Alpha, you could see, and a little bit on Bravo, you could see the fireworks from the hanging oh, okay. when they would do like the big, like red That's fireworks, and they would always be like, it was. "Air support, air support." That's uh, that's hilarious. Um, How did you guys keep your composure, like with like difficult gas? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> both of you to um, assume we kept it. <laughs> <laughs> It got to a point where I was like, I'm going to sit here and argue with you, or I'm going to get you out of the maze and then get back to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, with me, a lot of it, there was one, there was a couple guests who really wanted to just test me, and I was like, so I did the same approach that I do with my kids at school, and I'll just, I like switched. I was like, okay, I'm not going to yell at you anymore. I'm going to be like, okay, like, let's go. Like, 
just not not <laughs> in a, into, like, not a in a, nice like a, let's, yeah it was like a, okay like yeah okay, shoot sure, that shoot that like this. oh my god you're doing great like yeah let's go <laughs> but i, I would like walk behind them so they didn't have time to stop or like cause a scene so i'd just be on top of them just but i wouldn't be through. touching them um but i'd be on top of them and be like yeah good job you're doing great you're doing it and i'd get the get out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's it you're done yeah. Um, uh, zombies are like the different story. We, basically, we either ignore them or we have to go find a squad leader. <laughs> but yeah, so if we had a difficult guest and like want, wanted to stay in character, we would we would just kind of have to like die, you know, just die off. And if they were still being difficult at that point, like sometimes there would be a guest where like I'm back in the game. Basically, we we would die like kind of like count to three and then come back because you don't just die off of the first person you know yeah you don't die for one person exactly and you come back so that the other people like if it's a big big group you're not just gonna lay there the whole time because person depends in on front the time of night. that that depends on the time, <laughs> of the night, time of the season but like you come back every so often because the headband resets so you come back and if this person's still being difficult i'm like okay i gotta go find a squad leader like this person they, we, we would have people that just stand on the ramp and like get points off of us. Like they just would just stand there and that's shoot us. That's what in the gaming universe, that's what we call boosting. Yeah, they would <laughs> either do that. Camping. They would camp all the time. There would be people that would try to, there was somebody tried to camp like at the hood of the helicopter, like at oh, the edge of like, yes. before you even go up the street, they literally like the squad leader gave them the rundown and then they walked over to the helicopter and like knelt down on the platform and was just like in between the barrels, like doing, trying to camp out and shoot the zombies and we're all just standing there like come on we don't get that 25 kill streak to get the new <laughs> they're trying to get the 132 kills yeah, yeah. but like Sorry, I can't top this trying to get Ashley yeah man. It's like fun. um what what do you what do you think for as far as character development goes as, as far as from when you guys started to like the very end how do you guys think you guys did from the beginning of the season to the end of the season I had like three different versions of my zombie. <laughs> um, I didn't really have a character development yeah. just because I was kind of like, yeah, let's go. Um, I'm hungry. <laughs> um, I think it kind of just depended on the night for me mm -hmm. on how yeah. like into it it was like how, what had happened the day before the night before, like 20 minutes before, like, I think that depended on things but I didn't really so much see a development in when I first started versus if anything yeah. it was not a development but I can't just think of the word depending on the night how you felt and kind of yeah, yeah. it's just kind of like all right tonight we're gonna go out and mess around or tonight we're gonna start strong and be serious and then we're gonna and mess then around. we're gonna mess around yeah <laughs> some nights are just like i'm just gonna stand here and look pretty until you get <laughs> in the next room be the pretty squad leader yeah, yeah. <laughs> my name's pretty squad leader I'm like, <laughs> hi i'm pretty i would i'd be like okay like you guys are doing great. Let's go. Yeah. Cross the bridge. I would really love to see you do like a Visco Girl Squad leader. I think that would have been. The problem was I am a Visco Girl exactly. Squad leader. I show like, up with my scrunchies and my ponytail. Just get like a hydro flask, and you should have had a hydro mm. as your weapon. That would have been. been I thought about it. Funny. I thought about it, but my hydro has stickers on it, so I was like. Uh. <laughs> You'd make like a little cover. That would have been funny though. I can't lie. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> selfie. Take, take your phone out. Selfie. Selfie. <laughs> All right, <laughs> selfie. Now go up the ramp. That would have been. Like, that would have been next. funny. Oh my gosh. I mean, Brie had her car keys. If I was <laughs> ever oh a spot, but that's in that like would have been something in I would have done. The yeah. That's the universe. Some shenanigan yeah. I would pull. I mean, if you're talking about the zombie land universe, then you know would have. Hey, you know? it's fair so game. There you go. You know. Yeah. Depends however you wanna. Look at the zombie apocalypse. You can look at it as a giant game. I know. There's so game. much you could do with it. And I think that's yeah. why Infected has so many shenanigans. Because it's like so much of it is like, okay, you could definitely actually see this happening though. Because people are, you know, are in this constant state of war. Somebody's going to do something stupid to Someone's, relieve yeah. the energy at some point. Like yeah. some of these things, like these shenanigans that happen to where they kind of they're like don't do that like that was great but don't do it again it's like <laughs> come on you know it would happen you know this is legit like it could happen come on like no i mean Brie made, it, Brie made it clear i don't know if you guys watched her episode but it's like if you just sit there and let it actually like consume you like it, it can get you so like you have to have fun it yeah. can um 
Yeah, that was kind of like everything that built up to that final run. Just from like listening to the music for so long, like screaming at people for so long. Like that final run, I was like intense psycho zombie lady. Was, like, this is it. Yeah, I was, I was going, I was going at, it. at it. Yeah. But like there was a few other like shifts that happened before I even got to that point. Because I started off as like a really playful zombie. Yeah. I had, I turned into like this kid zombie because one of the squad leaders, uh, the German squad leader, Dan, he one of the groups came through and he started like protecting me out of nowhere and I was like what is going on I was trying to attack you why are you protecting me <laughs> and he starts yelling at the group like don't shoot her don't shoot her that's my daughter oh and I was my like god. Uh -huh. ah! <laughs> I wasn't even ready for the plot <laughs> twist I was like oh my gosh okay how do I spin that and then that's what kind of turned me into like a, like a kid zombie the next day I came back with pigtails because I was already trying to think of a way to like kind of keep my hair off of all the fake blood on my face because it would keep like matting on my face yeah yeah and so I would keep doing pigtails and stuff but then um I actually my night off is what like really changed my character performance because just from like Sitting in Ghost Town with my friend. I was sitting with Kenzie Crow in Ghost Town for 100% of the night. Like we were, we were, there. we're, we're good friends. I have her shirt on and everything. But <laughs> good old um, I was Indeed. sitting at the porch with her all night. Yeah. And we're just like we would go around and do other stuff, and we're just watching all this stuff go down in Ghost Town, and knowing I was with Kenzie, we had all this stuff happen with Hostel and Merrick, mm -hmm. and I even had like. American counter and I go back the next day and my zombie's completely different and I completely blame Merrick. I'm like, this is Your not this has not happened at all. <laughs> like I went full blown Left for Dead 2 spitter the next day. Like <laughs> I don't know where it came from. But then it, like at that point I was just going back and forth. I was yeah. either like freaking crazy or little kid. That's and it, most of the time it was it was crazy because that was the one that would get more scares. Yeah, that's I would hilarious. be the little kid zombie when it was like one of those nights where it's like, okay, we're messing today. We're messing <laughs> around. But on the more serious nights, I'd be like, all right, psycho zombie Here lady it is. <laughs> Release your energy. Yes. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, do you have any advice for any uh, people who want to become scare actors? Just do, Just do it. <laughs> Just do Nike, it. Don't I let your dreams stay dreams. Honestly, I... <laughs> never pictured myself doing it until yeah. I was just like, I'm going to do it. And I showed up to the auditions and I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and like, they were like, okay, do it. And I sat there and I went, ah, mm -hmm. but it got me in. Yeah, you get yeah. And then you point. learn you have to and start you, somewhere. yeah, you're yeah. so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then you learn and you get comfortable. I think for me, it wasn't more getting comfortable with like scaring, but the people around me, yeah and like observing and i was like this is fun Definitely. like i started getting reactions and that's what helped me grow mm -hmm. yeah so just do it just do it don't be afraid to look super silly yeah i agree with that because the only reason i actually had someone ask me why i waited so long so i'm 22 i didn't start right out of high school like <laughs> like some other people do they're like yeah. i'm 18 i'm auditioning and like yeah. um i didn't do that because i was more focused on like school and you know, trying to get a job and everything else. But I would still be at home like every other night, you know, and I didn't <laughs> realize that until this year. I was like, I have time to be there. <laughs> I've had seasons where I've gone like every other night with my friends. Yeah. I don't not have the time. I have a car and I was going every other night on a car that was like even more like, like falling apart. This one's like an established car. Like I have a good car now. Like, I have <laughs> reliable transportation to be yeah. doing this. So it was just kind of mm -hmm. that switch. And that's why I did Castle first because it was a lot closer to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm in San Bernardino, so Riverside's a much closer oh, drive. Man, yeah. Oh wow, but, killer, killer drive to come out to hunt. Yeah, oh, you but know worth there. it, Hell yeah. but definitely worth it. And. That was what kind of made the switch. It was like, okay, if I want to do this, I have to do it now or I might, like, really not ever get a chance to do it. Because who knows where it's going to be, like, when I graduate college or anything else, like, what my schedule is going to be like. So See, if so I have cool. time to do it this year, I better get it done. Damn right. Better just get that, started. You have, you have those memories, you know? Yeah. At least if, it, if life does get in the way, you're just like, at least I did it. Yeah, at least I did it. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the last questions we're going to ask you ladies, and we ask, we try to ask everyone on the show who comes on, What's your favorite horror movie? Ooh. I know that took like a weird turn from talking to Han. It is. It yeah. Is. I actually don't watch a yeah, lot of horror I don't. movies, but I really like the old Carrie. 
Oh, huh. classic. Stephen King right there. Yeah. I don't know. I like the Conjuring series. Conjuring. They freak me out. Conjuring 2 is a terrifying they, movie. I, that's, that's, that's mine. Why is that? That's my the pick. Nun. The Nun is fucking terrifying. Never ever fuck Pop. I know you do. That doesn't scare she's probably, me. She's probably staring at you right now. Probably is. That's fine, though. Yeah. If Valak showed up in my room, I would cry. <laughs> I think would. anyone would cry. That's <laughs> valid. <fucking> yeah. Valid, <laughs> Oh. Unless you freaking throw the freaking uh, blood of Christ in your mouth and then just spit it on your face. I don't, I don't like know. It. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know where in the world that that would happen. But you know, I mean, it happened in the movie, so. You know. that, well, that's not how they got rid of him. In the nun. Oh, in the nun, not in uh. Not in Conjuring too. They were just like the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> it is <an> exorcism. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Um, ladies, it has been a pleasure, and I'm glad you guys wanted to come on. I'm glad we had you on. Because, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. No, we're, we, we thank you guys. Well, you said you had fan. You had some questions too. Yeah, fan questions. Yeah. Oh yes, I got a couple from. There they're also from Victoria. Sweet. One let's, of them let's, is let's, one of them is one that it. we can both do. Before, I'll do before the one we wrap it, let's hear you guys' fan okay. questions because, of course, these characters are fans too. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're doing this. Friends. Yeah. Not I. No, I, I have no fans. I at least got one that we can we can both do. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any fans. To be honest, they're all his fans. I just show up. We can, That's not true. They notice you this year. We can too. both do this one. So it was the same Victoria Vigilance again. Hi, Victoria. She asked, "What was the first day like versus your last day?" And she means like season wise. So, for me, the first day was like so pretty overwhelming because like we had dress rehearsal to kind of get into the swing of things mm -hmm. but there's not as many people backstage because not yeah. everybody's working dress rehearsal it's split up into like three nights there's streets dress rehearsal and then there's like then these many the mazes, mazes and then yeah. these many mazes and so our night was all of the back lot mazes and us mm -hmm. so it was like paranormal waxworks the depths dark entities and infected i think that was all of us yeah. did that, that night was, right yeah, yeah. And so it was just us back there. Mm -hmm. And then you come opening night and it's everybody. Yeah. And so just seeing everybody back there, I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is a lot on. of people. There's yeah. a lot going on. And I was like trying to find Jen to go say hi. And then of course, when that happened, I'm saying hi to all these ghost town monsters that I freaking adore. And like mm -hmm. any other, like, like some of the clowns that I knew um, and everything else. And I'm like, oh my God, everybody's here. I don't know what to do. I'm just this little, like, awkward zombie walking around, yeah. like, hi, guys. Hey. hey. And I'm, like, really, aside from being, like, the crazy zombie that I did turn into, I'm really shy backstage. Like, I don't know how to approach people that I, that I look up to at all. But, so that was overwhelming compared to, like, the last day was basically like I have the swing of things. I'm in this routine now. I'm still shy backstage, but I've got a character or something going on. It was mostly the backstage aspect that was like. New. Yeah, it was us. That's, that's like me every time I see The very else. first group, though, like when they said that the maze was open and it was opening night, I was like, oh shoot, this is happening. It's go like, time. It's go time. It is first group. I better not mess this up. And it was funny because all the. Me and. There was like a lot of rookie zombies on Bravo. I think there was maybe like two vet zombies on and Bravo. On Bravo. No. Because I know Anthony. So. Not like zombies, but like vet actors in general oh, okay. vet actors not vet zombies because anthony was one and tim was a vet too but the rest i think maybe we were all like first time zombies in mm -hmm. general on bravo we were all first time zombies and so many of us were like if we break character we're gonna get fired don't mess up like <laughs> and, <laughs> but then, and then like give it a week and there's just shenanigans galore and especially like first night versus last night the shenanigans go from like zero to a thousand so. yeah that Were you starstruck by anyone back then? Oh, a couple times. I mean, John Cook came through the maze and I lost my mind. Oh, God, the man when he came through, I almost missed him. I almost missed him. I was like scary and doing my thing. And I noticed that um, like Cody or Greg, either one was like leading the group. So I was like, okay, either this group is important or drunk, like real drunk. But they were important because I saw I was over by the helicopter, like around the corner. And I see like John aspirin first and all them in there too and i see john cook going up the ramp and i was like no wait i didn't get to scare him and like i bolted like everybody else was on break it was like me and um like two other zombies they were on the other side and i was covering like that whole area on the other side so i had the, all that space to just book 
stuck it up to the corner of the ramp where you can like pull yourself up on the ramp and like lunge over it. And I just like like swiped at him and I could just see him like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like giving the nod of approval, like these guys are going at it. And I, I was loved so happy. When management or important people that you knew were important in some sort of haunt come through and they give you the nod they and give you the like, nod and you're like I did something good. You're like, I did it. Approval, Senpai man. noticed me. Over here on the nights of horror, John Cook is our hero. He the, is. He's our hero. The fact of the matter is the guy, I don't know how it sleeps. Let's start with that. Yeah, I don't know how that guy sleeps for one, because the guy is a full time parent. Yeah. The guy has a band. Mad respect. The guy runs three haunts. He helps run three haunts. Probably more haunts well, that we don't know of, but no, four now because the Dark Horizon. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I he yeah. probably does other little haunts like in the states that we don't know of, but it's those are the four major. He ones. does a lot. The guy, I, I follow him on Instagram. I know. I don't know what he does. How he makes the time, but the guy is an inspiration to us all. He's our hero. Because when we went to Midsummer Scream, we went to every panel. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, oh, John Cook's here again. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Even freaking the captain made a joke about John Cook being in all these haunts. Dude. Yeah. Like, that's how you know it's like, wow, this guy is involved with like everything. Won't be surprised one day if he gets involved with Horror Nights. Won't be surprised one bit. How was, the, how was your experience from the first time yeah, to your last night? Um... I feel like the first night's always so nerve-wracking, and you're like, I need to do this perfectly, I need to get this down. And the last night, you're like, I'm gonna mess around so much because I yeah. had so much fun, <laughs> and I want to, like, capture everything that I've done. So it goes from super, super serious to, I'm just here to have a good time. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I'm here to party. Yeah. Yep, I'm here to party. I'm <laughs> sending it off. <laughs> um, ladies, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you for everything that you guys do all season, for bringing one of the greatest mazes to life, um, bringing this whole show as a team to life. We really appreciate you guys. The whole reason why we're doing Scarecrow Appreciation Month is to give thanks and showcase who you guys are, not only as monsters but as people. Um, this is me. <laughs> this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Exactly. Um, and we appreciate you guys. We thank all of you for all the work that you guys put in all season, um, all the time spent away from your personal lives to come here, scare us uh, every night Honk goes on. Um, at the end of the day, we don't look at you guys as monsters, we look at you guys as our heroes. Because, Aww, that's, that's because amazing. you guys, that. you guys bring our best. nightmares to life and we love it. And that's why us horror fanatics go to these events is because we want to get scared. Yeah. We want to be, want to have a good time, want to laugh about it, want to meet people. And I feel like the platform that we're on, we, we have the amazing opportunity to do so. So Yeah, and it's really cool to see you guys using it yeah. for this too. Because yeah. as soon as I saw this kind of stuff pop up, I was like, what? Scare Actor Appreciation Month, when is this, was this, what is this? Like, okay. I had never seen this before, and then I was like, oh, because it's never been done before. Yeah, like, I feel like it's this kind of is, this is a new thing. thing. I love I that. Love when I hear stuff like that, like, it's never been done before, I'm like... Yeah, I've never seen, like... We're the I'm, first, yes! I was, yeah, you guys really are the first to do anything like this, because it just kind of popped up, like, from whoever else was... I don't know who was in the first one. But Jackie Brian. Yeah, know. Jackie Brian. Like, they were the first ones. And I was like, wait, what is this Scare Actor Appreciation Month thing? Like, yeah, Vincent has this, this always it. been done? And then I looked it up and I was like, no, no, it hasn't. It was it was a thing where uh, when we were sitting it, on a bench, sitting on a bench, and they were the first three. We had four in mind. We wanted Alicia, too, but she was, she was busy mm -hmm. uh, with her personal life. So we D2. To, D2, yeah. Um, but there was just we were just sitting on a bench and we thought of this idea and we're like you know what let's do it that's how the best ideas happen and we just sitting in sitting the middle of the bench. fog yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, and then we just started meeting all the other scare actors and then midway through this experience we've actually had people contact us wanting to be on the show which when it makes we, us we were it, excited it makes us static. feel like wow we are doing something and people want to come on and share their stories with it. it makes us feel really good about ourselves that I can't believe that we're actually doing something that people enjoy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, yeah. It's like some of the greatest ideas me and him come up with like have failed in the past, and then something we came Finally up with on a, something on a clicks. bench. Yeah. We're just like we came up with this on a bench, and people are like, <laughs> "Let's see, we'll throw a rod, we'll see if we catch." Yeah, yeah that's, um, I mean that's that's where all but the best no, ideas I mean, happen. At the end of the day, we we we've had fun meeting so many great people, and it's one of those things where when we go back next year, we can't wait to see a lot of these people back, either on streets or in yeah. and if they notice us. 
well, that's just a blessing in our favor. And or if they just scare us, that'll even be even better. Even better. So we thank you, ladies, for all the stuff that you guys have done this season, and we can't wait to see what uh, Haunt brings for you guys next season. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Um, you guys want to plug anything in? Social medias or anything? You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. Or if you want to shout anyone out. Um, Stub got his shout out. Stub got his shout out. Stub got, yeah. Full of Stub. He's the only only thing that matters here. We're actually here for him. We love Stub. I'm glad Stub got to make a, he got to make his podcast. He's covered in stains. I hope all of you monsters understand how many stains he has. He has so many jewel stains. One of them's from me, actually. (laughs) But (laughs) his little birthmark. Jen's got her jewel on it. Yeah, that's that's Tootsie. I mean, all these other ones on his head are probably all from Hostiles yelled at it. I feel so, so, yeah. so, so sad. I, I feel it? like his face actually got thinner after that because he did, he like smushed it down. And I'm pretty sure his face has not been as round ever since. So Did Merrick get on that too? Or? No, he didn't. Merrick did not. At least Oof. not yet. He lucked out. Um, he did luck out, but I don't know. I don't know. I think. Uh, He'll be ready to go next year. Ready to go next He year. won't. He won't. Uh, <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to wrap this up here because this is another great episode of Character Appreciation Month. We want to thank all the fans who are watching Character Appreciation Month and supporting the channel for Character Appreciation Month. Um, if you guys want to follow us on social media, it is at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at The Knights of Horror on Instagram to keep up with all things what we're doing, either hot season or off season. Just, uh, just keep up with the thing. channel. Do a little dance. Stub says follow Knights of Horror. Anyway. Um, so yeah, go ahead and follow us on social media at Knights of Horror. Follow Stubbs on Instagram. What's his Stubbs dot Stub dot Pumpkin. pumpkin. Yes. Follow Stubbs dot Pumpkin to see all his uh, haunt adventures. Just one Stub, not just plural. One. Just one. Okay. Yes. So Stub dot Pumpkin. Stub dot Pumpkin. Because he started out as Stubbs, and then I was like, Stub is easier to say in some sentences. Okay. So Stub dot Pumpkin. And follow, see his amazing <laughs> haunt season that he's had. Yeah. Um, whether he'd be. And future or not. adventures. And He'll future be adventures. I can't wait to see it's him. Not on. just haunt adventures. There you go. He's going. He's going everywhere. He's going everywhere. He's going to tra- travel the world. <laughs> um, Instagram at Nights of Horror, and if you're feeling a little extra generous, uh, we have a Patreon from a dollar all the way to twenty dollars. Um, see what we have to offer, because um, we're pre- very much going to be active in that in 2020. I can guarantee you um, that. And then uh, if you can't, always just for us, enough is a subscribe, a like, or a comment on our videos to show that we are doing something. And I know these characters like to read these nice comments that you leave them, so... Hey, turn those bell notifications on so you can tune into the next episode. Turn those bell notifications on, that Sammy. Bell. That is a, Smash that bell notification. That was the first one. I don't. Even, I never even say that, you know, because I just... <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I don't. Smash but the bell. I always forget it. Uh, a special thank you to our Patreons, Jacqueline Winters and Celine Martinez, for uh, donating on our Patreon. So we thank you, too. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> My name's Anthony. It's your boy Sam. This is Ashley. This is Delaney. And they were on the Scarecter Appreciation Month. And uh, this is Stub. Yeah, how do we get Stub? Come on. Uh, come on. Come on. What get it together. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Come on. No, I'm not a host of my retired. No, he uh, forgives you. It's a, he's a very forgiving boy. We love Stub. Well, since you're quitting, thank y'all. We'll see y'all on the next episode. Peace. <laughs>